Okay, and welcome back. So we're going to differentiate the equation 3x squared plus 4y squared equal 4. And we're going to find the second derivative using the method of implicit differentiation. Now, what implicit differentiation is basically is you're differentiating an equation that's in the non-explicit form, meaning it's not in the form um, f of x equals something or y equal an equation. It basically it means that you would have to isolate the y. In this case here, y is not isolated. So the problem is 3x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 4. So the first derivative would be, uh, use the power rule here, and we have 6x plus 8 y and since y represents some unknown function um, we have to multiply it times the derivative so equal to zero so at this point here you can go ahead and isolate the first derivative but we're gonna keep going so the derivative of 6x is going to be just 6 plus and the derivative of 8 uh, y y prime um, basically here you're going to use the product rule so what I'm going to do is do this in a couple steps first I'll specify it so 8 times the derivative of y y prime is equal to 0 so let's go ahead and take the derivative of this so you have 6 plus 8 times the quantity now we're going to use a product rule here so the product rule is this in case you're not familiar with it with, by now you are, but in case you're a little rusty. So it's fg plus fg prime prime. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the derivative of f and then times g, so derivative of y, that's 1 times y prime times y prime, which is going to be y prime quantity squared plus y times y double prime. So that's y times y double prime is equal to 0. Okay, so we can factor out a 2. I factor out a 2. And what I'll get is 3 plus 4. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 4. So I'm going to get 4 times the quantity y prime quantity squared plus 4y y double prime is equal to 0. Okay, um, so now let's go ahead and replace this y prime here since we can't have uh, a derivative in terms of another one. So let's go ahead and isolate this y prime right here. So I'm just going to do it in one step basically because I can just see it. So that's going to be negative 6x over 8y which reduces to negative 3x over 4y. So negative 3 x over 4 y. Okay, so we'll go ahead and replace this right here with this right here. Okay, so we have 3 plus 4 times negative 3 x over 4 y quantity squared plus 4 times y times y double prime is equal to 0. Okay, so this right here is going to become uh, 9x squared over 16y squared, and the 4 cancels with the 16, it just becomes a 4. So you'll end up with 9x squared over 4y squared. So that's going to be 3 plus 9x squared over 4y squared. So if that went by a little too quick for you, you can add in those other steps and you'll eventually get this. Okay, so this is going to be plus 4y, y double prime is equal to 0. Alright, let's move this up to get some space. So what I'll do now is just move everything over to the right. So basically I'm going to have this. I'm going to get y double prime is equal to um, I'm going to subtract this and this and divide it all by 4y. So I'll end up with negative 9x squared over 4y squared 
minus 3. And dividing by 4y is basically going to multiply this down here by 4y. And this here is going to be divided by 4y. Okay, so let's go ahead and work this a little bit. So you're going to get y double prime is equal to... Okay, so what I want to do is combine all this into 1. So what I'll do is I'll make one big fraction bar here. And I have 16y cubed here, so that's going to be the denominator. So for this to be 16y cubed on the bottom, I'd have to multiply the top and the bottom by 4y squared, right? So I'll go ahead and multiply this fraction here times 4y squared over 4y squared. Okay, and then this becomes 12y squared. All right, good. And then I can combine. So I'll have negative 9x squared minus 12y squared. And that's basically it. Here's something pretty clever we could do to kind of clean this up a bit. So what we could do is on the top, it looks like we could factor out a 3. So let's just see what happens. But not a negative 3. Let's just say we factor out a 3. So if we factor out a 3, we'll get negative 3x squared minus 4y squared. And the bottom can just stay the way it is, 16y cubed. Okay, now negative 3x squared minus 4y squared looks like something we had before. So let's look up in the top. So remember, negative and negative. You see, it looks like this one except it was negative and negative. So if you multiply everything times negative 1 here, you'll end up with negative 3x squared minus 4y squared is equal to negative 4. Okay, so in that case here, if this is equal to negative 4, then this is equal to negative 4. So this right here, all this can become a negative 4. So now I have y double prime is equal to 3 times negative 4 all over 16y cubed. Well, the 4 goes into the 16 4 times, so now I'll get y double prime is equal to negative 3 over 4y cubed. Simple, right? Well, not really. The clever part here was the algebra involved. Um, now, if you didn't see it right away, it's fine. This is still the right, an acceptable answer. But this is pretty clean. And it looks a lot prettier this way. A lot simpler. Easier to work with. Less to mess around with. So now we're going to use the quotient rule on this. Okay, so this time we're going to go by it a little bit quicker. You got g f minus f g over g prime prime squared. g times f prime, so that's going to be 4y times uh, negative 3 minus f, that's negative 3x times g prime, so that's going to be negative 3x times 4 times the 1 times the y prime, so 4y prime. And that's all over. Okay, so now we'll get y double prime is equal to... Okay, so now we can replace this y prime here. So we have y prime is equal to negative 12y minus 36x squared over 4y all over 16y squared multiply top and bottom by 4y. So now we can combine the top. So since we're dividing a fraction by a number, uh, the denominators will just multiply. All right, well, now let's simplify everything a little bit. Well, according to the original problem, you would get negative 3x squared minus 4y squared is equal to negative 4. So negative 4 is equal to that. This 4 here will cancel out. You'll have a negative cancel with this one. You'll get a 4. And you get the same answer as we did before. I know I went by this one a little quick, but that's because we did the other one. So good luck with your homework and tests in the future. And thank you for watching.